Hey YouTube, I hope everyone's had a really great Thursday. I wanted to just show you some stuff that I hauled and I didn't really want to wait another day because I've been trying to wait all week and thinking that I'd record this video and it's just not happening so I figured that I'd do it right now. Um, it's been a long day so you know I just, I actually still have my scarf on. I just took my work sweater off because I'm getting kind of warm but I like had everything still on. Because I thought I was going to be going out again, but it's just like monsooning outside. It's crazy, crazy raining. So, I still have my scarf on, and I'm probably going to leave it on because this shirt's kind of, I don't know. I don't really like it. I just like to wear it underneath of my cardigan for work. So, I don't want to show any cleavage right now, and I'm just kind of cozy with my scarf on. But that doesn't really have anything to do with my video. I feel bad because I feel like my computer is going to shake, so I might try to hold it with one hand because um, it is like resting on a pillow. I'm kind of, you know, rigging a system here to film in bed. But I did, like I said, want to show you my favorites because it's been a while. I'm using them. Um, it's not that I haven't, like I'm waiting to use them to do this video. I've been using them. But I do want to show them to you so I don't have that like looming. Like I always tell you guys, when I get new stuff, I want to share it with you. And I don't want that, like, looming thing of, I have to tell all my friends, you know, my recent purchases and what I like. And I do plan on doing a February Favorites, I guess, that I had missed out on. Number one, I plan on doing a February Favorites. Um, or maybe just a mid-March Favorites, but it's not really mid-March yet. So I probably am still going to do a February Favorites. Um, but I also was thinking that I might still do a top 11 of, 11, of 2011. Um, even though it's a little bit late into 2000, not late in 2012, it's kind of late to do that video. Um, but I do have a lot of stuff that I, I liked over 2011 and I feel like maybe you might want to know what it is. So you guys can let me know in the down bar if that's something you're still interested in or if it's just like way, you know, way past. You don't want to hear anything else about 2011. So you can let me know about that. And I guess I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I got, let me see, it's sort of like a haul from Sephora, Nordstrom, and I think that that's it. Sephora, Nordstrom, and Macy's. So that's where, that's what I'm working with here. The first thing is last weekend I went to Nordstrom. Now I'll give a little, I'll give a little background. I was at Sephora, and I don't have this to show you obviously because I ended up returning it. But I was at Sephora and I was anticipating the release of the Immaculate. So that was the Hourglass Immaculate Foundation. It was the cream or the liquid to powder foundation. And I was really, you know, I was thinking that would be perfect for me. It's great for oily skin. Um, not that I have really oily skin, but it's good for, you know, Hourglass has that type of really pure formulation where it's paraben-free and phthalate-free and gluten-free and, and fragrance-free and all of that. So I thought it would be really good for my skin, number one. And number two, since the liquid not the liquid foundation, but since the tinted moisturizer didn't work out for me, I thought this might be a good alternative. So I did purchase that. I tried a sample of it the week before. I sort of liked the sample, but I didn't get a good grasp on it. When I was in the store last week, um, I was working in the area of the Sephora. I tried on the Immaculate, and I thought that I liked it in the store. So I thought, you know, while I'm here, I'm in Pittsburgh, I'm kind of, I'm not really close to my home, it's a trip for me to get here, I'm going to grab the foundation and I think that I'll like it. So I purchased the Immaculate, brought it home Friday night, because I was working in Pittsburgh Friday night, brought the Immaculate home Friday night, I had another um, set of interviews I had to do with people on Saturday morning in Pittsburgh again, so I thought worst case scenario, if I hate it when I put it on in the morning, Usually one day isn't enough to tell, but if I did, then I thought I'll just return it. So I did put it on Saturday morning before I went to work, and I just was not feeling it at all. I had a little bit of just breakouts kind of in this area, you know, where I normally get them hormonally. So I had that to kind of see how it worked with in conjunction with those breakouts and kind of how it performed. And then I also, my skin was just not uneven. So I wasn't having a great skin day. It's been like the time of the month where my hormones are kind of in full force and causing me a lot of skin problems and you know my skin was at it sort of at a bad stage so if that foundation wasn't going to work for me then then I knew I wasn't going to like it so I put it on Saturday morning and I just I didn't like it it wasn't covering the way I wanted it to cover 
it was, it's very dry when you put it on. Like, it does turn to powder. It wasn't spreading. It wasn't creamy. It wasn't really, wasn't giving me that medium to full coverage. It wasn't even feeling very buildable to me. So it almost gave me more of a sheer coverage. But that's just my personal, obviously this is my personal opinion, personal experience. I know that there are some people that loved it who have reviewed it um, on Sephora have loved it. So there's mixed reviews. I just didn't care for it. It didn't do what I wanted to do and I'm very used to my Chanel Matte Lumiere. So I have a certain expectation for a foundation. So I guess that's just a really long story. I, I wanted to let you guys know that I did purchase it. I did kind of go outside the realm of my Chanel. And other than that, it's nothing against Hourglass. That foundation just didn't work out for me. So I wanted to let you guys know that I tried it and it didn't work. And I don't have it to show you. So that kind of led me into my trip to Nordstrom. I wanted to return that foundation because where I was on Saturday, I was near a Nordstrom. And there was a Sephora in that mall. So I was able to return my Immaculate Foundation at the Sephora and then head to Nordstrom and just get my normal Chanel foundation. Because I was actually completely out of this. That's why I thought, you know, I'm going to go on a branch or go out on a limb, whatever it's called. <laughs> go out on a limb and try the Immaculate and it didn't work. So I figured stick to basics always at least have this in my possession so that if something else doesn't work I'm not just left without what I usually like or the coverage that I usually have so I went to Chanel and I purchased another matte lumiere and you guys know that I love this foundation I love it it's my I would say it's my holy grail I don't know why I always try to search for other ones um, it's good it works with my skin my skin likes it my skin responds well to it um, my skin just is happy with this so that's why I stick with it. Why I expand into other ones sometimes is because there are days where I feel like this isn't maybe holding up like I want it to or um, I'm breaking apart kind of like in my cheek area. You know, I may have some areas where it's wearing away. But all in all, this is just my very trusty and loved foundation. So I got Matte Lumiere in color 50 Natural. So that was this one. And while I was in Nordstrom and while I was at the matte counter, I decided to splurge a little bit. I, I really intended to go in, return my foundation, get the money back from the Immaculate, buy my Chanel, and beat it. <laughs> but it didn't work. So I have wanted this for quite a while. When I say quite a while, it's been probably since November. So I have really held off on it. And it just wasn't, it wasn't working that day. I needed it. So this is the Illusion to Ombre Chanel in eboli or eboli and here we go you guys know i mean you've seen it probably a thousand times i've been very inspired for this color or to want this color based on two girls that i do watch on here that wear it and have worn it in videos where i just think i have to have that and that's erica from the style chronicles and then also hannah from miss hannah g and i will link those uh two channels below so they, those two are primarily the ones who really encouraged me to purchase this particular color and also the fact that this is my favorite color to put on my eyes. So it is, um, you guys can see the lighting isn't too bad. I mean, I don't think I even need to hold out my hand for you. This is it. It's like a burgundy, beautiful color. So this color is gorgeous. I've worn it twice already and I absolutely love it. I really want more of the colors. Um, I really do. I'm trying to think. Before I bought it, I talked to my friend Rachel, Makeup Never Sleeps, and I asked her, I think we were talking maybe on the phone, and I was asking her about all the colors, and I think she has all of them. And she was telling me which ones are good and which ones maybe she would skip. So I have to check in with her again to see. Um, there were two other ones she told me that I might want to get, and I forget what they were. I think they might be like the lighter, it might be the lighter colored one, the champagne-ish color. And then the dark one, Epitone, did she, not Epitone, not the green one. I don't remember. I'll have to ask her. So, Rachel, remember to tell me the other two colors that you said were good. But I love this. So, these are two definite winners for me from Chanel. And, okay, next, what did I get? Next, Sephora. So, at Sephora, this is something else I've wanted for a while. When I say a while... I mean like two years and I don't know why I never purchased it. It just kind of slipped my mind or it wasn't like on the forefront of something that I wanted to purchase. It just kind of, 
I wanted it at one point and then I just forgot about it. And it's the YSL Rouge Volupt number one. And I I wanted this originally probably two years ago when I was in Nordstrom and I ended up getting lingerie pink number seven and then the number two instead. So I was between one and two and I went with number two. Well, I ended up not wearing two a lot, and I don't know why. I actually tried it on the other day. I think that it has on me a little bit of a brown tone to it, which I don't always love on me in nude lipsticks. But I do. I like it, but I need to mix it. So I knew that one or two was a little bit high maintenance for me, and I didn't wear it as much as I'd like to wear it, so I think that's why this just kind of slipped my mind for a while. Well, recently when I was getting in, back into YSL again and I purchased the Impetuous Beige, the Rouge Volup Pearl, and I love, love, love that color. I actually have it on right now. Um, this is Impetuous Beige. But at, when I started getting back into that and I loved Impetuous Beige, I just thought, you know what, I really do love these YSL lipsticks, and I kind of came across this again. So... I swatched it the day that I got Impetuous Beige and a few other things at Nordstrom. This was a few months ago. I guess maybe two months ago. I don't know, timeline-wise. And I didn't get it because I just felt kind of splurgy. Like, I didn't I didn't need it then either because I was spending too much on makeup at that time. And I would swatch it since then every time I'm in Sephora. And every time I don't buy it because in the back of my mind also I'm thinking I really want the Tom Ford Nude Vanilla. Um, which I haven't purchased either, so I thought, you know, don't even spend 30 on YSL when you really want the Tom Ford, just order that. And here, I don't have the Tom Ford and I have this. I couldn't, I couldn't hold off anymore, just like the Ombre Shadow or the Dombre Shadow. I couldn't hold off on this anymore. I swatched it, I put it on the other day at Sephora, and I thought, I'm getting it. So I love it. I do like it on me better than I like number two. It's a little more cool toned. Um, it's called beige. I feel like it, the beige is in the name. Beige, nude beige, I guess. Um, but it's more like a pinkish color on me. It's like a pinky beige. And if you can see just right there, that's the color. It is a little bit cool toned. Even my friend Jason who works at Sephora said that it looked cool toned on me. He didn't even particularly care for it on me, but I didn't care that he didn't care for it on me so I got it anyways so that was my other purchase from Sephora and this was my second purchase from Sephora and I got this actually at my Sephora JC Penney's near where I live and this is another thing that I saw when it came out I saw it come out online I think on Sephora.com and I thought oh no not another one I'll hold it up for you so you know what I'm talking about so I thought no not another nude palette I don't want to want to buy another I don't want to want another nude palette and so I just put it out of my mind but when this came out or when I saw this I guess they stocked it at my JC Penney Sephora the other day and I saw it actually out and swatchable I could not I couldn't pass it up I lied I did pass it up that day I thought to myself I'm not gonna get it right now because it sort of reminds me of what did it remind me of what is that one? The Stila Natural Eyes. I think the Stila Natural Eyes. So I thought, is it too much? Are there too many similar colors to the Stila Natural Eye Palette? So I didn't get it, and I thought, I'll just bring my Stila Natural Eye Palette back later, and I'll compare them and see. So a week later, which was this, I don't know, sometime this weekend, I took my Stila Palette, and I went back to JCPenney Sephora by my house, and I, we held them up, my friend um, who works there and I, we held them up side by side. And she's like, this is completely different. She said, this Lorac palette is all warm tones, which are totally you, what you like, get it. It's, it's so much different than the Natural Eye palette by Stila. And so I did. There are some colors that are semi, sort of similar. So you might think that they're similar. Um, but all in all, this is a very warm palette. The Stila palette has that kind of charcoal gray or that slate gray in it with a shimmer and then it has the blackish color the bluish gray and then the blackish color so there are um cooler tones in that palette this one is just strictly 10 colors of warm tones and amazing the shimmer on Lorac isn't too chunky no fallout it just is so silky smooth buttery these glide on like no other I've worn them three days in a row you can't see, but I have them on today, and I did get compliments. I mean, I rarely get compliments on my eyeshadow, 
people always will mention my eyeliner. Like, what do you use? How do you pull that off? The wing liner. And, you know, some people just feel like they can't pull off certain things. So they'll mention my eyeliner that they like it. But I rarely get any compliments or any, you know, comments on my eyeshadow. Probably because I'm neutral most of the time. Um, but I did get today, I had someone say that they loved how my eyeshadow looked. And I really think it was because of this palette. It's such a great palette. So I'm going to show you. I know you won't be able to see that well, but I'm going to try to open it and show it to you. I'll show you kind of how it works. So this was the cover. Pull it off. Um, this nice little box is inside. Side note, I love, love, love Lorac. I mean, I have just grown to absolutely love this brand. Everything about it. I just, I love my blushes. I'm, I love my blushes. I'm using them all the time. The Hollywood, the Exposed, the Flaunt. I'm loving those. Um, I like that Spotlight Highlighter. I love my, of course, Lorac Baby Doll Lipstick. Um, I did love that Porefection Powder, too. It just, I was, like, having congestion with my skin at that point, so I stopped using it. I don't know if it was that or, you know, something else, but it gave a gorgeous finish. So I love this. Just all in all, this brand is awesome. So this is how it comes. You know, here's the box. Open it up, and here's the palette. I love the palette. It's so solid. It's a solid, nice heavy palette and it just it's it's sturdy it feels just very sturdy it's kind of cute with that little zipper but also neutral at the same time so it's not gaudy by any means um but you get the palette and then you also get with it which i haven't used so i can't really attest to it um this Lorac behind the scene behind the scenes eye primer and here it is right here it's nice i i haven't used it i use my paint pots i guess i swatched it but it comes in like a little lipstick type formation you can see how that looks um, I'll use it one day you know and I can let you guys know if I like it but I haven't used it yet so here's the palette and it's small I mean it's a lot smaller than the naked palette it's probably comparable to the Stila natural eyes but it also comes with a mirror which is nice for those of you who like to use the mirror but here are the colors I'm trying to see, I'm trying to like peek around to see if it's in the shot. Okay, there we go. And they're just all, oh, they're, they're beautiful. I'm not going to swatch them for you. I really suggest either you go to Sephora and swatch them yourself um, or you just take my word for it. I mean, I feel confident to give you my word that this is awesome and I love it. So I can really um, just say that and not feel like I'm telling you something completely out of line if you don't have access to it and you love warm tones you can really build these up or you can shear them out I think they're super versatile um, but just the swatch one they are very pigmented so you know they're pigmented shadows they're just like they're awesome so I love this palette I'll shut up about it now I know I said I'd shut up about it but I can't it, it's just easy. It's easy. That's what I can say about it. It's easy. It's a quick eye look. You can combine any of them and it's just effortless. So I love this palette and that's, I'm done. I'm done talking about it now. I think it was around 45 too. Okay, last thing I got was uh, trusty, again, just like my foundation, uh, Lancome eyebrow pencil. I had to go get a replenishment of this last night at my Macy's. Is it in here? It's the Brow Expert in the color taupe. You guys have seen this a million and one times on my channel, on my videos. It's just my go-to brow pencil, spoolie on one side, pencil on the other. I actually, and this is, I might do a separate, I think I'm going to do a separate review on it, but do I have it here? This is what I've been using the past three or four weeks. Christian Dior Ultra Fine Precision, Precision, brow pencil. I don't know why I can't talk right now. Um, loved it. Loved it. It's gone. I used the whole thing in like three and a half, four weeks. Whole thing is gone. I was so pissed off when I tried to use this yesterday morning. I go to use it and you know, you guys know I mainly draw on my whole eyebrows. So when I don't have eyebrows on, I look weird. I need eyebrows. I can't not be, I can't be without eyebrows and I don't have a thousand eyebrow pencils laying around my house. So this is like, this is it. I tried to twist it up and it's just, it's not twisting up anymore. I had to like scrape it on my, okay, that's kind of gross. I didn't scrape it on. 
but there was just enough to get like almost the rest of my brow on. I think I had to use some eyeshadow to finish them. Gone in like a month. I don't understand it. It was too expensive to be gone in a month. I'm doing a separate review on this. If you guys care. I'll probably will do a review on it though. I feel like it's worth doing a review on. But that's basically it I guess. That's all. That's that. Um, I did get this weird thing. I, I guess it's not like a weird thing. But when I was at Nordstrom I also bought a pair of boots. Which I'm so excited for them to come in the mail. So I'll show you guys those when they come. Does that make sense? I'll show you guys those. What? I just am so out of it right now. I think I say that every video. Maybe I'm just like out of it in life. But anyways, the sale, they always suggest this to me. They always like ask if you want a credit card or ask if you want this, that. And I'm always like, no, I don't want a credit card. I don't want a credit card. I don't want a credit card. I feel like I say that to everybody. I don't want credit cards. I don't have any. I don't want any. So anyways, I don't want any credit cards. And I always reject credit cards when people ask. But, um... Can you imagine me with a credit card in Nordstrom? Can you imagine what I would do with a credit card? I can't even imagine. I can't imagine what I'd do with a credit card. I don't think I would have. Good thing I don't have any because I just would. I, I don't even know. I would probably not be very responsible with it. Or maybe I would. I don't know. Maybe it's responsible not to have one. Okay, so earn rewards when you shop. I basically signed up for this thing and she said it's a debit card application I don't know she said it wasn't a credit card I don't have like a I can't just like use it as a credit card but all it is is it's a Nordstrom like she had to run my driver's license and run the report like I was getting a credit card but it's not it's a debit card so I guess I in the mail I think it came today downstairs actually I didn't open it it's a Nordstrom debit card so it's my own Nordstrom debit card and it's connected to my debit card because that's how I purchase things like, I don't, um, I don't use credit. I just, like, don't purchase anything if I don't have the money for it. And I don't use cash. I use that. So, it's not, if it's not my checking account, if it's not, if I wouldn't have the cash for it, then I don't buy things. That's just the way it works with me. So, I always use my debit card. So, I always pay with my debit card when I go shopping. And, basically, what the Nordstrom debit card is, is since I'm using my debit card anyways when I shop, um... It's a Nordstrom debit card connected to my debit card, so I'll use the Nordstrom one every time I shop in Nordstrom, and it'll pull it out of my checking account, the money, but it will also collect rewards um, through Nordstrom. So I thought that was kind of cool. Like, just by doing it, I think I spent, because I spent a certain amount of money that day, I got some money back. Oh, I'm going to get... Oh, okay, so I'm going to get $20. I guess downstairs there's a $20 gift certificate to Nordstrom. It was a $20 Nordstrom note because I spent over... Spend $100 on your new Nordstrom card today and we'll send you a bonus $20 Nordstrom note. Okay, so that's what I did. I spent over $100 that day at Nordstrom and I get a $20 gift certificate in the mail. So I downstairs have $20 to Nordstrom because I signed up for their debit card, which is connected to my debit card, and I'll just use that every time I shop at Nordstrom. Do you guys get that? Is that kind of confusing? I thought it was kind of cool, though, but that's that. So I will let you know what I get, and I can't wait to show you guys my boots that I got. I cannot wait to show you my boots. Um, I have some other stuff coming in the mail. I guess not really some other stuff. I have kind of like a clothing type haul that I can do soon, so I'll do that for you. I know this lasted a really long time. I think I rambled a lot, and I'm probably just like lonely and need someone to talk to, so I won't stop talking to my computer, and I'm comfortable in bed, so I just feel like I never want to stop talking. But Hope you guys enjoyed everything that I hauled. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, you know the whole deal. And I'm really sorry if my computer was shaky. I think it was. I forgot to hold it like I said I was going to. But hopefully I stayed kind of still. But I hope you have a good night and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.